Hi, this is Anthony and welcome back to my show. As always, before I begin, please click the subscribe button below. It really helps me out and doesn't cost you anything. Thanks so much. If you're like me and live in the United States, you've seen the prices of many things, especially gasoline and food, go up quite a bit lately. In addition to that, the stock market by various measures has dipped into bear territory. And if you own a lot of high tech stocks, you've probably seen your portfolio fall much farther than broader indices like the S&P 500. Besides those things, we're likely facing higher interest rates and a recession in the near future. So things are not looking particularly great in the United States and in a number of other countries for that matter. But certainly nothing as bad as what's going on in Ukraine, which was invaded on February 24th, 2022 by Russia. At this point, nearly 50,000 people have died, millions of people have been displaced, and approximately $600 billion in damage has resulted from the war. The advice that you hear from many people in the financial space is that gold and silver are hedges against inflation and hard times. Certainly a war between a superpower and another large country that is disrupting fuel and food supplies throughout the world could be considered one of those hard times. And more recently, so-called investments like cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin in particular, have been proposed as insurance or efficient and effective means to store value in times of conflict. Let's take a look at these very securities and so-called investments. Here's a year-to-date chart of a silver ETF. This pretty well mirrors the price of an ounce of silver, and because it can be traded during trading hours on the stock market, it is an efficient way to own silver, in my opinion, as opposed to going to a coin store, buying an ounce of silver, and then when you want to sell, going back there, and even if the price of silver has gone up, there's probably going to be a dealer's fee that you pay either when you buy and or sell. If you have a no commission broker like I do, then buying and selling the silver ETF, ticker symbol SLV, won't incur extra charges. Today, May 27, 2022, silver through the SLV ETF is $20.36. Year to date, silver has dropped 82 cents from the beginning of January. On February 24th, 2022, the day the war started, it was $22.31, so we have a loss of $1.95 as of today. Now let's go back 10 years to May 25th, 2012. The price was $27.62, so in 10 years we have a loss of $7.26. These are in nominal amounts, they don't take into account inflation and opportunity costs, so the losses in effect are even higher. Let's look at gold, ETF, ticker symbol GLD. Units in this fund represent one-tenth of an ounce of gold. Today it was $172.85. Year to date, gold has gone up $4.52 per unit. However, since the war started on February 22nd, the price has gone down $4.64. Looking back 10 years, on May 25th, 2012, price of this gold ETF was $152.68. So there has been a gain of $20.17 over the course of 10 years. However, that was in a dip. If you would have bought just before or just after that, you would have likely lost money. So, if you would have bought exactly a year ago, you would have averaged about a 2% gain per year. And again, not taking into account inflation or lost opportunity costs. The takeaway here is when people tell you that gold or silver are good hedges against inflation or times of trouble, think about the actual charts. For much of recent history, gold and silver have been terrible investments. Challenge people on their statements. Tell them to prove it to you if they think that gold or silver is such a good investment. And even in the case of gold for the past 10 years, the returns have been about 2% per year if you were lucky. Compare that to any index from the stock market. You most likely would have made money in any index like the S&P 500, etc., rather than in gold or silver. Now let's look at gold at oil. Now this is an exchange traded fund that invests in forward-looking oil contracts. It is ticker symbol USO. A year or two ago, the price was getting down very low, so they had a reverse split. So that's taken into account in the graphs that I will show. I'm using this ETF instead of the price of a barrel of oil because this ETF is a popular one and easy to buy and sell. Year to date, it's up $30.63 or 55.86%. 
but since the war broke out, it's up only $19.12, which admittedly is a good return at this point. But you go back 10 years, the equivalent price of this unit was $273.76. So during the past 10 years, you would have lost $188.30, plus because this was a reverse split, most brokers, but not all, charge a reverse split fee. In my broker's case, I was charged a $38 fee, which is in line with the fees that many brokers charge for reverse splits. So can you make money with this? It is certainly possible that the trend may continue to go up slightly. But remember, when prices go up, then high cost producers can re-enter the market and start making money again, which then can decrease the price because an increase in supply. Also, if we do have a recession, which is predicted in the United States, that will likely decrease the demand for oil, which could cause the price to go down. An end to the hostilities in Ukraine could also reduce the price. And again, looking at the recent chart, I could see the price going up another couple dollars in the medium term. But is investing $85 now in the hopes that in three to six months, the stock is worth $87 worth it for most investors? I think with the stock markets perhaps bottoming out at this point, that far larger increases in investments could be made simply by putting money into the Dow or S&P 500. Of course, Ukraine has been called the breadbasket of Europe and produces a lot of wheat that is exported. Russia also produces a lot of wheat that is exported. And so this has caused wheat prices to go up recently. But again, let's look at the charts rather than assuming that our gut feeling on a particular commodity equates to knowledge on returns. There is a wheat-related ETF, ticker symbol WEAT. About 10 years ago, it was $26.65 today it's $11.58. You would have lost $9.07 over the past 10 years. Year to date, you would have made $4.31, but since the war, it's only gone up $3.45. There are a lot of videos on YouTube warning about upcoming food shortages, and India evidently is now blocking exports of wheat to other countries. It is possible that we have shortages of products derived from wheat, even if it's panic buying, not based on actual shortages, just as what we saw a few years ago with toilet paper in stores. Can you make money with an increase in wheat prices using this ETF? It may well drift up a bit and you might be able to make some money, but this is not an obscure fund that sophisticated investors and traders are unaware of. The price that this fund trades at is taking into account what the market believes the future need of wheat to be based on situations and events from around the world. If you wanted to put a little money in this fund, it probably wouldn't hurt, but I doubt that you're gonna make a lot of money in it. Of course, I could be wrong, or some other cataclysmic event could happen that further reduces the availability of wheat on the world market, causing the price to go up. What about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin? Well, obviously, if you bought it years ago, you'd be up $28,451.70, but year to date, you'd be down $18,954.70, or a decrease of 39.71%. And since the war started, you'd be down $9,472.70. So as a store of value, when times are tough, it's not very good. Evidently, any Ukrainian or Russian oligarchs holding Bitcoin as a hedge against depreciation of local currencies or as a type of insurance against losses due to war or acts of God are probably regretting not just holding their assets in something more stable, useful, and liquid. And one last thing. I presented these five different financial products as something that can fairly easily be bought and sold by really anybody with access to the internet. I focused on them because people often consider them as a store of value and therefore insurance against inflation and also a method to speculate on price increases due to insecurity around the world. But think about this. If you really want something that will hold its value and be useful, is having Bitcoin or gold really what you want? If you are a Ukrainian soldier trapped in a steel plant surrounded completely by Russian forces, which would you rather have? One Bitcoin? An ounce of gold? or a box of sausages and canned food and bottled water. Probably the latter option. So if you think that we will have inflation in America, which we likely will, and we may have shortages on some food staples, then the way to insure against that is to buy stuff now.
most things are not going to get cheaper. Obviously, you can't buy a bunch of gasoline or a bunch of milk and hold it for a long time, but you can buy pasta or rice and hold that for nearly forever. And you can buy canned food and hold that for years. Certain drinks will also last a long time if not opened. Certainly, it's possible that any or all of the financial products that I've mentioned could pop up and people could make money. I don't have a crystal ball, and remember, I'm not a financial advisor. But if you want to beat inflation, then buy stuff now instead of waiting six months to replenish your macaroni supply. Okay, that's enough for today. Please let me know what your thoughts are on the matter. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Hopefully by now you've subscribed to this channel and liked this video. I would love it if you looked at my other videos. Hopefully click the like button on those and leave a comment, even a short one. All those things really help me out in building a following. Remember, nothing here is financial advice, simply YouTube entertainment. I'm just some guy from the internet that you don't know, but I think that as you listen to my entertainment, you'll see some legitimate wisdom in it. Again, do your own research into what you think is appropriate for your portfolio, your risk tolerances, and your time horizon. I'm on Instagram at Anthony R. R. Mills. You can follow me there. Since this channel is not yet monetized, if you want to help me out, I sell small collectibles on eBay. Things like old stock and bond certificates, coins and banknotes, stamps and postal items and books, along with other things such as Masonic items. If you're interested in buying silver coins as collectibles or investments, I usually have some listed. If you're interested in investing in gold or silver as a commodity, I have a few YouTube videos that explain how you can easily do that plus some of the pitfalls of doing so. You can find my items on eBay with my username, stock underscore tycoon. Thanks for watching and good luck in investing.